root vegetable is one of the most common ingredients used in a lot of culture. It is comfort food to almost everyone in this world. Root vegetables, they're actually like really versatile and also very forgiving, which is like everything I like in a food or person, basically. Come on, baby. Ah! I see all the beautiful colors and I immediately think rainbow trout. I'm using a combination of different root vegetables, like radishes, beets, blue potato, and then a bit of leek to make a rainbow scale on top of the fish. The inspiration behind my dish is my dad. We would fish in the summertime for rainbow trout. And I remember my dad showing me how to get the bobber on the line, fond memories. My dad died when I was 20. It was a mighty rip through the page of my life. And I wanted to do things that would be kind of safe. For a really long time, food felt like a risk. I now feel ready to do some risking. <laughs> one minute, you have one more minute left. We're rooting for those root vegetables. Oh, oh boy. Almost done. Yeah. yeah. Uh -uh. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. Great work. Well done, everyone. Jennifer. Yeah! <laughs> That's the feeling. <laughs> this is Turf and Surf, a sweet potato puree, a beet puree, seasoned blanched vegetables. Underneath all of that, there is a rainbow trout poached in a flavored broth. This might be the first fish I've eaten where I like the scales. The fish is cooked perfectly. The root vegetables, they're definitely the star of the show. They really showcase those earthy, deep flavors. Overall, pretty amazing. Thanks. Hi there, Jennifer. Hello, Chef. It certainly is eye-catching. Beet is such a wonderful root vegetable to work with. What comes out is that earthy, slightly sweet flavor and those root vegetables as part of the scales on top, maybe slightly under-seasoned. Okay. But if I had to score this dish on a scale of one to 10, I'd be giving it eight and a half. So well done, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer, how are you? Oh, hey, Chef Claudio. Tell me, what are you making for your sweet cheesecake? Okay, my sweet cheesecake is a chocolate cheesecake. The inspiration is a walk through the forest. Some spruce tips there, I see. Yeah, yeah, I'm wow. just uh, in the process of candying them a bit. Beautiful. What are you doing for your savory? I'm doing a everything bagel with urban garlic cream cheese. So I've taken a pastry cutter and placed it in the middle. That sounds like a great concept. My only concern is time management, but if you can pull yes. this off, you are definitely one to watch. Thank you, Chef. This is the moment of truth. If those cheesecakes are not set when they come out of the mold, no garnishes can save them. Oh. Yeah, Jenny. Good job, Jenny. Oh. Woo. Yeah. Good job. One minute! Come on, guys. Come on, get those decorations come on. Come on. on. Come on, just throw it on. Get it on. Good job, get it on. 10 seconds, oh, time! Eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one! Hands up! Jennifer, let's talk about the savory one. This is an everything bagel with urban garlic cream cheese cheesecake. Very original. Good on you for using that mold to create the hole in the middle of that bagel. Very, very ingenious. I actually quite like that. It really does have that bagel savoriness to it. The cheesecake itself has a very good palate feel. Very, very creamy. Oh, yay. Well done, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer, can you remind me of your concept here? This is a chocolate cheesecake, and I try to incorporate a lot of earthy elements. Ooh, it's a bit under. Uh, 
Let's see how it tastes, though. This is really great. Great control with all the textures. And those spruce tips blended really well with the richness of the cheesecake. Amazing. Thank you, chef. This cheese is unreal. Avonlea cheese is wrapped and then aged in the ground in PEI, so the minerals from the soil actually work their way in there. It smells like potatoes and also tastes like potatoes. For the first dish, I was thinking kind of like chips and dip. That's what the potatoes made me think of. So I'm making gorgiers. Gorgiers are like a savory cream puff. And then I have an idea, like broccoli and cheese, man. It's like so classic. So crispy cheddar and broccoli. And then I'm just going to finish it off with a tart tatin. So to make a tart tatin, you put apples into a good hot cast iron pan with butter and sugar and let them caramelize. Then the pastry crust goes on top and then into the oven for it to finish off baking. Oh, right. For the broccoli and cheese, I have put in butter, breadcrumbs, and a whole bunch of the cheddar. And on top of that, I layer the broccolini. I actually think the broccoli and cheese dish is the weakest link in Jennifer's lineup of three dishes. Doesn't sound like it's ambitious enough. This dish is, like, so simple, but I want to do something really kind of classic, but do it really, really well. I can smell the cheddar, um, so that's caramelizing. For the tart tatin, I've added a bit of cheddar to my crust. It has like a nice brown on it. I feel hopeful. Getting the tartin out of the mold can be quite tricky. That caramel is so thick, it can quite easily stick to the pan. When I've made tart tatin at home, I've never had like a perfect execution. It feels promising. Jennifer is just about to flip her tart to ten. It's the moment of truth right here. Ooh, OK. Oh, some of the apples are actually sticking to the bottom of her pan. <sighs> I just want to fix this as fast as I can. One minute, you have one more minute. Get oh, going, get no. going. Josh hasn't even started plating. This is going to be so close. What am I missing? Come on, let's go, let's go! Ah. Holy heck. That's good, that's good. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heads, Heads up. up! I know it's not up to me, but it sure would be cool if this were awesome enough to get me to the finale. I've made cheddar gougeres, and I've made a crispy cheddar broccoli with some bacon, and a tart tatin with a cheddar pastry. Jennifer, you love cheese, don't you? <laughs> that is true, chef. I like the concept. You took simple things, and you added cheese to it. And this is a take, I guess, on cheese and broccoli, right? Yes, chef. Cook is perfect. You get that sweetness coming from the broccoli, and then you get that sharp hit from the cheese itself. You got the balance of flavor, the seasoning, it's right. Well done. Thank you, Chef. I get to try your apple tatine. Let's see how this tatine cuts. That's a good sound. What I see is a nice, light, golden color on that pastry. It is very, very good. That apple has become so molten and soft, and there's enough of that savory cheese element that adds just a touch of saltiness to it. This is an excellent rendition of a classic French tatine. Thank you, chef. So tell me about these gougeres. I was trying to capture some of that potatoey flavor near the rind, so it's in the batter. And then I think chips are always best with dip, so it's just some spicy honey and uh, some grapes and pine nuts. The question here is, is there enough of that beautiful cheddar in your gougeres? I think so, chef. I'm not too sure you really nailed it, but Technically, these are very textbook. They're airy, they're light. Mm -hmm. I just want more of that cheese. Okay. 
It doesn't feel like the bat flip level home run I have felt a couple other times in the kitchen, but it feels like I did a good job. I am making fancy ants on a log. A traditional ants on a log is you take a log of celery, you fill it with peanut butter, and then top it with raisins. It's a fun way to eat some vegetables. <laughs> Growing up, this was a snack that I had in my school lunch, and I just didn't think there was anything cooler than ants on a log. Jennifer. Hello, chef. Ants on a log. So how are you going to make it great? This version is with blue cheese, a celery juice vinaigrette, and pork poached figs. I really want it to look like a bit of a sculptural art piece that you get to eat. Yeah, well, you have always inspired us and impressed us with your beautiful plating. Thanks so much, chef. Don't let those ants run loose, eh? OK. 100% the hardest part of the appetizer for me is the celery. I'm a little worried because it takes a lot of skill, which she has, to elevate such a humble vegetable as celery. Because the backbone of this dish is celery, and Andre's is lobster, I have to allocate a lot of time and love and care into this celery to make it the best celery the judges have ever had. If she can pull this thing off, she's gonna wow us. Hey, okay. Yeah! Celery looks good. Thank you, thank you. We are moving. Time is the most important ingredient in this kitchen. Jennifer, what's next? I'm gonna make a blue cheese mousse. Way to stay focused. You got it. I still have to do so many other components. Almost, almost, almost. My brain is just in this mode. Good job, Jennifer, good job. Five minutes, you only have five minutes before the first course. Both Andre and Jennifer right now are feeling the heat. Everything has to be beautiful because this is such a simple dish. More salt. I want all of the bites to be perfect and all of the bites to be just a little different. OK, here we go. One minute, That's one good. minute. Oh, Service is coming to pick up your dishes. You got this, come on. Nice. That looks amazing. Wow. Thanks, guys. Looks fabulous. Thank you. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, hands up. Andre and Jennifer, please keep cooking. We'll excuse ourselves to the banquet room while we try your appetizers. I think the way I treated every element on this plate makes it a finale worthy dish. I hope so. Next is Jennifer's appetizer. Fancy ants on a log made of pork poached figs, a celery brunoise, and a blue cheese mousse. She has taken a very childlike dish and elevate it to restaurant quality. I look at it and I can't wait to tuck into it. It seems almost simple in the beginning, but once you taste it, you realize the complexity, the fine detail, and the finesse to it. In there, you get so many complex textures. I get the crunch from the, the walnut and the celery. And then you have the blue cheese, full of flavor, but it's also balanced. It's very hard to balance blue cheese. There's so many different juxtapositions happening on this plate. It's a really, really smart dish. I mean, this is the kind of dish that you could see in, may I say, a Michelin-starred restaurant. This is just spectacular. When I tasted the lobster, I thought, how is a celery and blue cheese dish going to compete with a dish of Andre's caliber and quality? Any ingredient in the right hands can be sensational. Let's get back out there. OK, not quite, not quite. Jennifer. Hello, Chef. Hi. Hi. So how does it feel to have Becky here right now with you? Awesome. <laughs> what are you making? I am making a take on a beef stroganoff with beef tenderloin and fondant potatoes. And I'm making a mushroom ketchup right here. So is this a teenage favorite for you? Oh, well, it's one of the things that my mom was really amazing at making. Is there any advice that you want to ask Becky? Oh, man. How did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> just think about everything you do. Don't just wing it. Forget about everyone else. If you like it, then just think about that. Right. So this challenge, Jennifer, cook from the heart. That's really important. Yes. All right, okay. good luck. Thank you, Chef. Good luck. Thank you, Becky. Jennifer. This is happening, and it feels awesome. I'm not walking up to the judges so much as just floating up on cloud nine. I'm really excited for them to try this dish. 
This is a modern beef stroganoff with beef tenderloin, creme fraiche, and mushroom ketchup. I think the plating is genius, sheer genius. It is so eye-catching. It lays out clearly the ingredients on the plate. And you call this a mushroom ketchup? Yes, yeah. And what is in that mushroom ketchup? I took some dehydrated uh, morels as well as black fungus. I rehydrated them with beef stock as well as a bit of beer and soy sauce. <sighs> that is a big, big mushroom flavor. You know, I think you have honored the stroganoff idea in a modern way, in a unpredictable way. You have a great culinary mind. Thank you so much, Chef. It tastes as good as it looks. It's really amazing. Great depth of flavor. The only misstep, though, the beef is a little bit undercooked, you can see. Right. It should have rested a little bit longer or maybe seared a little bit longer. Okay. But other than that, it's really amazing what you did with an hour. Thank you, Chef. Delicious. It's so incredibly exciting and moving when people really, like, pick up what you're putting down. And I feel really proud of what I've put on the plate. OK, what's next? Lamb. <laughs> I'm making Mary's Little Lamb. This course is really different than the appetizer course. This course has a zillion elements. It's going to be lamb shanks with hay-smoked oats, some sour cherries, some demi-glass cherry glaze, and uh, some mint fleece. They all require a lot of time, effort, and care. It's game time. I think it's going to be worth it in the end. Uh, right now, I'm working on some lamb shanks. I just seared them to brown them, and now I'm going to get them going in the pressure cooker. She's pressure cooking her lamb for only 35 minutes. She has to get that lamb shank in the pressure cooker right now, otherwise it won't be cooked. Yeah, that's time to slow down. Slow down. There you go. Yes. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Atta girl. Getting something into the pressure cooker is a calculated risk. You don't know exactly what's going on until you open it. Timing on the lamb is like mega important. Jennifer is taking that childhood nursery rhyme and creating almost every element from that nursery rhyme in this dish. I am making a mint fleece for the lamb. To do this, I'm powdering some mint candies and I'm going to make them into the cotton candy. That is going to be the minty element, which is a great condiment to have with lamb. Is she doing cotton candy in her dessert? No, or no, this isn't this entree? dish. What? It's crazy. I want a nice little fleecy ball that almost looks like a cloud and will melt away when it touches the lamb. There we go. Both Andre and Jennifer right now are feeling the pressure. I think part of it is that they're multitasking. Half of my burners are taken up by the pressure cookers for almost the entirety of this cook. I have at least five elements that require burners. This is very tricky. I think she has too many things to do. I'm a little bit anxious about that. Less than 20 minutes left. The only thing I have done is fleece. I can think of eight other things. I still have to finish. Can I get this all done? I know how to do all these things, but time is of the essence. My oats, I am hay smoking right now. I just got to do the next right thing. I feel like a lamb might want to eat some oats. <laughs> She's got to be very careful with the smoking. Do not over smoke. It might impart a bitter finish to those oats. It's risky, but if it works, pure genius. Steel cut oats are amazing anyway, but with like the sneak attack of smoke taste, I think it'll be outrageously awesome. The smoke smells awesome. Thank you, thank you. Look, Jennifer's opening up her pressure cooker now. I don't know if it looks done to me. It's tough to see from up here, right? I can tell whether or not things are done usually by feel. I hope I nailed it. Hold my time, guys. Five minutes, five, five minutes. minutes. Keep going, keep going. What was that, Jennifer? A uh, red wine demi glass. Wow. I'm going to add some of that uh, sour cherry syrup to it. I am brushing these lamb bones with some of the glaze and wrapping them in copper foil. It's finale day. Why wouldn't I? Nice, Jennifer. Oh, my god. Wow. Hey. You got it, buddy. Five, you got it. Eight, eight, seven. Six, four, five, four, three, two, one, and off. At the start of this, I thought this dish might be a bit impossible because there was just so many elements, but it did all come together. I just really hope they love it. 
Jennifer's entree is up first. It's a braised lamb shank served with hay smoked oats, sour cherry glaze, and a mint fleece. I always love a story in a dish. It evokes the sort of whimsy of that nursery rhyme. It is eye-catchingly colorful. And this right here, this mint fleece, it is so unusual, very smart. Oh boy. This lamb is undercooked, is slightly rare. In the middle, my lamb is slightly undercooked. It's a braising piece of meat. This is not the type of meat that you ever, ever serve, medium rare or rare. Claudio, that's too bad, because my piece of lamb is beautifully cooked, tender and juicy. Mine was also cooked perfectly. I think we have to consider that both of you had smaller shanks than mine. But the vegetables, for me, are really the star of the show. They're so complex. The carrots perfectly cooked. The oats with that smoke going through them, sensational. I love that combination of meat, fruits, vegetables, starch, all coming together. And the thing is, everything fits. And then you got that plump cherry giving acidity, bit of that juice balancing with sweetness. And finally, I love that mint fleece. There is such a lot of detail in this dish. It's a really good one. First thought that lands on me is about my dad. He passed away when I was 20. His birthday's coming up soon, so I want to put my heart on a plate today and see what happens. Every birthday, my dad would make bacon-wrapped scallops. So I'm going to try and recreate like some of those tastes and smells and hopefully feeling as well. I'm making my dad's birthday scallops, pork belly, with a rum and cola glaze. It wouldn't be my dad's birthday if he didn't have a rum and cola in hand. For the fire element, I have a smoked pork fat and maple birthday candle. I really wanted to create that smell of like bacony fat hitting the grill, but it also melts away into extra sauce on your plate to dip stuff in. Look at that. Jennifer has got liquid nitrogen in her station. For the ice elements, I'm making dulce ice cream pearls with liquid nitrogen. All right. Dulce is this really yummy, savory snack. It's a kind of seaweed. I'm taking dulce powder and whisking that into some cornstarch slurry and hot milk and start adding liquid nitrogen. And one minute later, I have ice cream pearls. I have a lot going on today. There's no shortage of things that could go sideways. With ice cream pearls, I'm also going to make hazelnut snow. I'm mixing hazelnut oil with maltodextrin and put it in some liquid nitrogen. I want it to melt like actual snow, like when you get snow on your tongue and then it's just gone. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and up! Jennifer, please bring your dish up. This dish was to honor my dad. I've made scallops, some pork belly, a dulce ice cream pearl, a birthday candle made out of smoked pork fat. My dad's favorite drink was rum and cola, so I made a rum and cola glaze, and that's brushed on the pork belly. I definitely see the fire and the ice. I got that warm feeling, that sweetness coming from that scallop complements the pork belly perfectly. This sense of togetherness, of flavors from the earth, flavors from the sea, flavors coming together. Well, did your dad know that you're a great cook? Um, no, chef, it's kind of something that I got interested in, um, but I think I kind of caught the bug from him. He was just really multi-passionate and loved really good food. My father also passed away way before I was a cook, and we share some moment that we wish he was here, and somehow, I'm sure he is. Thank you, Chef. I almost don't want to dive in because it's so beautiful. No, please, wreck it. Just go. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so flavorful and beautiful, but I, what I love is that you can tell it's made with love. I mean, you mayor timers are just the best. <laughs> I always feel like you can knock on anyone's door out east and they would welcome you in for a, a lovely meal, maybe not quite uh, this elaborate. Thanks so much. Very intrigued by this. It looks like a candy that's been just wrapped in some tin foil, but I know it's more than that. This is a dulce ice cream pearl. 
beautiful flavor. That seaweed really comes through. I've never had an ice cream made with seaweed. You have talent to burn. Thank you so much, Chef. To impress the judges, a gold medal Olympian. Feels like such a gift. Jennifer is eating up a lot of valuable time right now, butchering her fish. This feels embarrassing to say, like, as someone who comes from the East Coast, but I've literally never filleted a whole fish before. Hi there, Jennifer. <gasps> Hello, Chef Michael. <laughs> you got given the fish. Yes, I did. And you spent a fair bit of time removing the fillets. Yes, I did. I am making an ebi sudai carpaccio. I'm going to be deep frying the body as well and serving the carpaccio in the body. On the carcass. Yes, yes. That sounds a very interesting and uh, unique presentation. Do you think this could be a bit of a do-over after those fish cakes? Maybe. I'm excited for the opportunity to work with fish again. I love the positivity that you bring to every challenge. Thank you Good so much, Chef. Good luck and use that time wisely. Yes, Chef. Five minutes. OK, pal, one more dunk. I've never deep fried a fish carcass before, so I have no idea what I'm doing. And I am doing it just by eye. We'll see what happens. I tell you, if you're only serving the fish, there's nowhere to hide. feeling the best. I wanted to put some more sauce on top, but I just didn't have time. I tried to just focus on the fish, not do a whole, whole lot to it. I'm quite nervous. Jennifer, please bring your dish to the front. This is, hands down, the most nervous that I've been, because it's a whole carcass on a plate, and that's all. This is an ebi sudai carpaccio and I've made a sauce with some chili, lime, garlic, ginger, and cilantro, and I've served it in the fried body. Six seasons, I've never seen anything like this. That's a good thing. Oh, okay, thank you, Chef. It's pretty amazing. The seasoning, it's just perfectly balanced. Wow. Last challenge. You struggled this challenge, you're back in the game. You have incredible skill. Thank you so much, Jeff. You know, you hit it on the spot. <sighs> the texture was perfect. The way that you preserve and reuse the carcass of this fish I am deeply touched because Asians don't like to waste anything. This is how we are so crazy rich. <laughs> now, you know in Asia, only the honor guests of the table gets to sink their teeth into this. The eyeballs. Today, I think the person to be honored is you. Are you sure? Yes. Thank you very much, Chef. You have certainly honored this beloved Asian ingredient. You did it justice. I'm touched. Thank you, Chef. You can float back now. Yeah, oh my god. Dear diary, today I got to eat an eyeball on Master Chef Canada. So where the magic is at today. I got clove, cinnamon, and thyme. I've never used them all together. I pretty much never use cloves, and I never think about cloves other than apple cider at the Christmas market. So that's the first place my mind went, and I'm just gonna run with it. I'm gonna go dessert today. So I'm making a cinnamon creme patisserie and a clove creme leger, which I'm piping in a glass, and a sweet thyme tuile to sit on the top. I've been trying to just really channel emotions and memories that feel special to me and then just run with that. And it seems to be working so far, so I really hope the judges like it. Let's do it. <laughs> Going very cool. Racing against time. I feel like I'm an octopus with like eight tentacles going at like eight different things, keeping it all on track. I have to get the creme pat in the fridge. I have to get the creme leger in the fridge. This really has the potential to just look like a bunch of slop in a glass if things don't set properly. Oh, hope and a prayer. There's some heavy hitters down there, man. Somebody yep. huge is going home today. <sighs> Take your time. This is crazy. Two minutes left. Let's go. Hustle, Two hustle. Minutes. Two more minutes. 
it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Final push here. Last bit. Last bit. Smells like campfire. I love it. I love it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. Jennifer, it's time to taste your dish. I hope the judges can see that I took the challenge really seriously and that I wanted all three of these spices to be the hero of it. Tell me which McCormick gourmet spices you got in your box. I use ground cinnamon, ground clove, and also thyme leaves. I've made what I'm calling the winter holiday market. There's a cinnamon creme patissiere as well as a thyme tuile, and then just finished with a bit of smoke at the very end. It is a very poetic dish, and the presentation just gorgeous to look at. It's all there. That little hit of smoke, the clove, the cinnamon, the thyme. It's not overpowering, but it is full and creamy and light. Yay. One tip would be to make that tuile just a shade thinner. OK. But overall, I like this dish. Thank you, Chef. Well done. Thank you. Well, I must say, when I look at this, it's simple but sophisticated. But what I say about taste? Taste is king. Wow. It's a very nice dish. It's executed well. This is like Christmas in a spoon. Thank you so much, Chef. Totally mission accomplished. I couldn't have hoped for anything better. Is that rice? Yeah, yeah. You're puffing the rice? Oh, that's so cool. Oh, nice. Jennifer's is doing a take on sugary breakfast cereal. I love breakfast cereal. Many a chef finish their night with a bowl of sugary cereal. It's more Saturday night than Saturday morning. Good. Puffy. If I'm going to serve the judges treat cereal in the finale, I better make sure that there's some good technique in that bowl. Let's see what happens here. I'm making a chocolate crumble, meringue marshmallows, a sugar cured egg yolk, with a brulee, chocolate ganache, and tea smoke milk. Jennifer. Hello, Chef. Okay, How tell are me. You? you know, why tea smoke milk? Something that I think is so nice after a meal is a sweet and a tea. And I use my favorite tea, which is birthday cake flavored. I just think it pairs really well with this. You got a lot going, you got a lot of treats coming. I can't wait to taste this. Yes, Chef. How do you think of smoking milk? Oh, I don't, I don't know what happens in there. But really. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't both Andre and Jennifer have a multitude of garnishes and ingredients to finish their dessert. They really need to move fast and efficiently right now. I'm just flipping the sugar-cured egg yolks to make sure they all get enough time in the sugar. Putting it under the sugar, it creates a light skin around that egg yolk so it doesn't burst. I'm going to melt some sugar and do a little brulee on top of it for a bit of crunch. Nice. Woo! Ten minutes. Ten minutes left for dessert. Keep going. Keep going. It is neck and neck in this kitchen right now. They have just under 10 minutes left. Looks great, Jennifer. Just to see Jennifer in her element doing what I've always known her capable of doing is amazing. Woo! One minute! You have one more minute left! Come on, one minute! Come Let's on, go! Get it out. Come on, guys! Look how soft that ice cream is that Andre's scooping out. It looks gorgeous. Whoa, let's go! Wow. These dishes look pretty incredible to me. Yes, Jennifer! 15 seconds! Finish strong, finish strong! 10, 10 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1! Heads up! Amazing! That was incredible! <laughs> 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 I've literally given everything into this cook. Like, I'm super wiped and I'm super pumped that I just finished it. You did it! You did it! Oh my gosh, that happened. That happened! I'm so proud of myself. We did it! You did it! Wow. Jennifer, please describe your dessert. Tonight I've made one of my favorite dishes, treat cereal. There's a chocolate soil in the bottom. I've puffed a variety of different rices. I've made some marshmallow meringue. There's a chocolate ganache bed for the sugar-cured egg yolk. And I've tea-smoked milk. This isn't just a dessert. This is an experience. 
<laughs> wow. Jennifer, that first mouthful is a bit of a mystery as to what's in there. The second mouthful, it starts to define each flavor and texture. That subtlety of the smoke of the milk, that rich, complex flavor of the ganache, the texture of the puffed rice, there's something grown up about it. If there was one adjustment, one caveat, mm -hmm. I would like just a little more sweetness but it really is a tremendous dessert. Thank you, Chef. All these sweet cereals that I miss as a kid, the ones I crave, I recognize it all here. So my dream has come true, but in a sophisticated adult way. Oh, thank you, Chef. This dessert is absolute creativity. It's somebody who's really mastered technique, flavor. You can't teach this. This is one of the most original desserts I've ever had. Thank you, Chef. I kind of just wanted to give them some of the sense of wonder I have felt the entire time I was here. I'm just so happy.